Hello and welcome to another quick tutorial for Brizograph design in Affinity Photo. Today I'm going to cover the basics of how to make duotone images. And duotone images are especially handy for the Brizograph um, because, as the name implies, you only need to use two colors of ink to get uh, an image that blends together multiple colors, multiple tones, uh, without requiring you to do multiple, multiple passes uh, of colors as you would for a CYMK print. Um, this is the kind of happy spot between uh, the vivid dynamic prints and uh, not pulling your hair out with the amount of labor and registration issues you might invite if you're trying to do a full CYMK print, especially on our uh, little uh, mildly out of date uh, single ink cartridge Rizzo printer. Um, so I recommend it broadly. And uh, here's a quick tutorial for how to get something that looks a lot like this. And as you can see in this demonstration here, um, we are printing in blue and red, and we've arranged it such that the deepest, darkest parts of the image come out looking pretty close to 100% blue, um, whereas red is picking up our mid-tones and blending with the blue in a bunch of different ways to add some dynamism, some depth, and uh, some, good, some good color in our image. So how do we do this? Um, let's start with a totally different picture and uh, walk through that same process. Um, here I've got some lovely techno scrap. Uh, I'd like to use this as a background image in a zine that I'm making. Um, so in order to prep this for Duotone, I wanna make sure that I've got something to begin with that's going to be really, really legible after I, I fiddle around with the colors to a great extent. To do this, I'm gonna hit the adjustments tab and I'm going to make it black and white. Um, and then I'm going to hit the curves tab down here. And I'm going to add a kind of shallow S shape to our curve here. This is just a quick and easy way of increasing the contrast such that our darks are really, really dark and our whites are really, really white. This will help make everything legible um, as it goes through the larger duotone process. And we'll, you know, make the Rizzo do what the Rizzo does best um, really help that saturated color come through in our final print. So with this done, I've got a pretty good base image. And um, as you can see, Affinity Photo works with things pretty non-destructively. So each adjustment that I've made um, shows up as a layer that I can turn on or off. And, you know, if I were a coward, I could, I could keep going like this. Um, but I'm feeling bold uh, and I'm feeling like I don't want to deal with quite so many layers in my future. So I'm just going to delete all but the new layer that I created by clicking on the Merge Visible button. So here we go. We've got our base. Now let's do Oton it. We're going to start by copying and pasting it. You can also go Control-V um, so that we have two exactly 100% the same images. And we are going to select under our Blend Mode bar, Multiply. And if you recall from earlier tutorials, it's important that we do this because this simulates how Rizzo ink works. Rizzo ink is translucent, so the results of one layer are going to show through pretty dramatically on the layer below and blend in interesting ways and make new colors, uh, all of which we need to take care of in our digital emulation here at Infinity Photo. Um, the other thing we covered in previous tutorials was how to add tint layers. And I'm gonna quickly speed through that right now. I'm adding two new pixel layers and I am going to color them. Um, ideally, I would do so by um, entering the hex code that corresponds to the precise Rizzo inks that we have in the lab or in your lab, but being a little lazy here and just using colors off the shelf as it were. We've got a blue tint layer and a red tint layer. We're going to select them both and we're going to set the blend mode to screen. So this is a pretty funky result here and uh, not at all what the result will do. We have one final step to set up our emulation settings correctly. And that is to drag our tint layers uh, down below the text of our corresponding image layers. And I did not succeed there the first time. There we go. Okay. And just in the sake of printing hygiene, I'm going to label um, these layers so that I 100% know that I have the right color of ink loaded in the printer at the corresponding time. So as you can see, we have a blue layer and we have a red layer. 
um, all of the same image and all corresponding so that the deepest, darkest, 100% black in our base image um, will output to 100% red ink. And then everything else is a, a tonal gradation thereof. Um, this is handy because this is how the risograph printer sees the world. It sees 100% black and it's gonna print 100% red, um, which will not be as correspondingly dark. So that's something we've got to balance out. And so far, when we have both of our layers here and up and visible uh, set to multiply mode, we've got a pretty purple image, which you would expect because red and blue do indeed make purple. And this itself might be kind of interesting, um, but there's a further final step that we can take if we want to pursue that duotone effect. And to do this, we're going to need to adjust how um, uh, the different tonal values in our image are outputted in each color. And we can do that by clicking on the blend ranges button next to our blend mode tab. Uh, blend ranges looks like a little cog. And when you click on it, you see um, two different um, charts, uh, Cartesian planes, very exciting. Um, we are only gonna concern ourselves with the source layer ranges. And what we are going to do is uh, knock out different parts of this graph rather than asking it to print 100%, which is what the line up top means. We're going to be rather selective in where we want different inks to fall on the page. So I've got blue selected here and blue prints much darker than red. So I think it's a pretty good candidate to make up all of our dark ranges. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna try and knock out all of the parts of the image that have a much lighter tonal range, which is this further right half of the graph. So we want our graph for our dark colors generally to start off pretty strong and then diminish as we move from left to right. And as you might imagine, we want the opposite to be true of our lighter color. We can make a kind of basic straight up and down graph where we get uh, bigger, taller, and more exciting uh, moving from left to right. And already this is doing some interesting things with our image, right? We've got um, uh, deepest, darkest blue in our deepest, darkest black parts of the image, and these interesting, more reddish tints happening in the middle. But there's more, more of an art that we could find here. We might want to make these splits all the more dramatic. So here I am messing around with the red layer and I'm telling it's to print 100% for, for larger chunks of the image, right? This uh, upper fourth quadrant um, and then not at all for this lower fourth quadrant. Similarly, I can select blue and do the opposite. Let's see what that gets us. Um, a kind of dramatic result. And maybe you like this. Maybe, however, you're, you're more, more one who's apt for blending. That purple was more interesting to you than full blacks. We can kind of go back and jigger things around um, until we find something that is a little more pleasing. Um, you can, to whatever extent you'd like, um, make this a more exaggerated, more posterized effect or a smoother, more graduated one, um, much will depend on the degree to which you have these flat planes in the graphs that you're dealing with. And um, contextually, this will matter better or, more, or worse to you as you travel through the world and pursue different design projects. Um, but this is the basics um, of how duotone images work. I hope this is useful to you. Um, and I'll just remind you that when it comes time to print your beautiful piece of art, you will want to select only the black and white version of your layer um, of the corresponding ink color, which you've conveniently lab labeled. You'll notice that um, here in our image, we have all of these checkerboard patterns coming through in multiple parts of our image. This is good and fine. This just means that um, these parts of the image are totally translucent, which makes sense because we've knocked out the white in our dark color. And similarly for our red, we've knocked out the darkest of dark parts of it and have concerned ourselves entirely with um, these mid-tone spaces. Um, this will not show through, you will not see checkerboards in your output on Rizzo. Um, it's purely an effect of the exciting world of Affinity Photo. So yeah, hope this is useful for you and hope that you get some really exciting prints out of it. Um, happy printing, take care out there.